Chapter 27 The Tower of Babel 2 Genesis 11, 1-9 The Tower of Babel has a continuing problem as the meaning of its name, Babel, indicates. Does it mean, as the Hebrew text indicates, confusion, or, as the ancient Akkadian would tell us, the gate of God? This disagreement is still with us in that modern, one-world order dreamers do see it as, in some sense, the apotheosis of man, his attainment of stature and self-divination. What to Christians is a symbol of man's evil dream is to the humanist the hope of mankind. Lange's comment is important because he recognises that two differing views of unity are at war here and throughout all history. He notes, quote, Delich says correctly, page 310, quote, The unity which had hitherto bound together the human family was the community of one God and of one divine worship. This unity did not satisfy them. Inwardly they had already lost it, and therefore they strove for another. There is, therefore, an ungodly unity which they sought to reach through such self-invented, sensual, Outward means whilst the very thing they feared they predicted as their punishment. In its essence, therefore, it was a titanic, heaven-defying undertaking. End quote. The inward unity of faith ought to have been the centre of gravity, the rule and the measure of their outward unity. The historical form of their true unity was the religion of Shem, its concrete middle point was Shem himself. It sounds, therefore, like a derisive allusion to the despised blessing of Shem when they say, Go to, let us build a tower for us and make unto ourselves a name, a Shem. When, therefore, the tower building, the false outward idea of unity is frustrated, then it is that Abraham must appear upon the stage as the effective middle point of humanity and the preparer of the way for the unity that was to come. Abraham forms the theocratic contrast to the heathen tower building. Since that time, however, the striving of human nature has ever taken the other direction, namely, to establish by force the outward unity of humanity at the expense of the inward and in contradiction to it. This has appeared as well in the histories of the world monarchies as in that of the hierarchies. The history of Babel had its pre-signal in the city of Cain, its symbol in the building of the tower, its beginning in the Babylonian world monarchy, but its end, according to Revelation 16.7, falls in the, quote, last time, end quote. The contrast to this history of an outward force unity is formed by Shem, Abraham, Zion, Christ, the Church of Believers, the Bride of Christ, according to Revelation 21, 2 and 9, end quote. Turning again to the differing meanings of Babel, confusion versus gate of God, we see two different worldviews and hopes for humanity. The two meanings are totally at odds. They represent antagonistic plans of salvation, the one by human action, the other by the grace of God. Two views of sovereignty are in conflict, the sovereignty of God versus the sovereignty of man in a world state. One rests on the promise, ye shall be as God, knowing good and evil, Genesis 3, 5, the other on our Lord's prayer in the garden of Gethsemane, not my will, but thine be done, Luke 22, 42. We have two rival doctrines of what constitutes the good, one of which is evil, The goal of the builders is to make us a name, a shem, verse 4. God's definition of the good, of authority and power, was for them wrong, and it was time for a redefinition in terms of man's ability and potential. If every man is his own God and lawmaker, there can be no universally binding doctrine of law and morality. There is, however, an insistence that any valid doctrine of law and morality must be man-made, As a result, many 20th century thinkers have specifically chosen the Marquis de Sade over Jesus Christ. Donald Thomas summed up the Sadean dream, 
In this new order of the Sadean universe, it seemed that there was to be no God, no morality, no affection and no hope, only the extinction of mankind in a final erotic and homicidal frenzy, murder, theft, rape, sodomy, incest and prostitution were to be the reasonable means to that end. End quote. Behind the cry, let us make us a name, is a great hatred of God. We miss the point of much of man's history if we fail to see it as a war against God. The Marquis de Sade relished the idea of killing God as the ultimate crime and pleasure. Nietzsche delighted in thinking of himself as the God Slayer. The reason for the tower was, quote, Lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth, verse 4, Scattering is seen as the great evil. At the same time, nothing divides men more than sin. Thus, without any action from God, the builders of Babel would have scattered in time. God's division and scattering represented an act of both judgment and mercy because his immediate scattering forestalled major conflicts and killings. The tower was a symbol of man's defiance of God, but... God being defied and hated, there was nothing to prevent their hatred and defiant contempt for one another. If all men are gods, we then have the murderous wars of the would-be gods. The fear of being scattered indicated an inward separation. Men do not worry about being separated from those whom they love if no problems or conditions exist to separate them. The fear of dispersion existed because sin had already made clear their lack of unity. If the scattering took place in Peleg's lifetime, we can get some idea of what was involved. Peleg was born 100 years after the flood. According to Keelan Delich, given the longer lifespan, if we estimate four male and four female births per marriage, there would be perhaps 30,000 people living in Peleg's day, of course, it could be three or four times that amount. The Tower of Babel is ancient history, but it is equally obvious that it is contemporary history, very much a part of our present-day politics. Men outside of God have not surrendered the dream of the original builders. Andre Parrott held that the Tower of Babel was not, quote, a clenched fist raised in defiance of heaven, end quote, but, quote, rather as a hand stretched in supplication, a cry to heaven for help, end quote. He gives no evidence for this opinion because there is none. He is more accurate in stating, quote, The Tower of Babel is the cathedral of antiquity, end quote. Parrot held, quote, and then, let us admit it, this idea of an angry God who comes and with his own hands sows discord, the source of all wars and of all hate, in the very heart of a united and therefore peaceful humanity, raises a theological problem, the gravity of which we ought seriously to consider. End quote. For Parrot, then, the problem is a simple one. At Babel, mankind was the victim and God was the sinner, if we fail to understand this moral reversal of all standards, we will not grasp the meaning of the Tower of Babel then or now. The Tower was not only anti-God, it was an indictment of God, as are all attempts since then to create a one-world order apart from God. <laughs>